um, thanks for inviting me. Um, about two years ago, I moved down from Liverpool, where I'd been curator um, at FACT, the Foundation for Art and Creative Technology, which is the UK's leading centre for art and technology, um, and Open Eye Gallery, which is a photography gallery established um, at the end of the 70s, um, and then saw through the capital project and mm -hmm. moved Open Eye down to a new waterfront location. Um, to increase audiences and put together a new programme and all that kind of thing. Um, and I really moved down to Birmingham because I was inspired by um, the strength of practice that exists here locally um, with photography and digital media, um, but also inspired by the support network that's here. Um, as we've heard from Nicola and Pete, um, the Library of Birmingham, the Grain um, team, and Pete James historically and now Nicola over the last few years has been really important at pushing forward um, photography and digital practice here in the region and supporting in all, all those millions of different ways. Um, but also the universities here work really interestingly and really involved um, and in partnership with external organisations. So there's a very kind of inside-outside relationship between um, students and interesting practitioners development um, and curators like me and Nicola and Pete picking up on the the talent and the ones to kind of watch out for before they've even left uni um, and supporting those practitioners development and that seemed like a really exciting opportunity so um, you also have all these amazing grassroots initiatives here and a lot of um, self-started activity by practitioners here in the region as well. Initiatives like Some Cities, um, which is a project by Andrew Jackson and Dan Burwood um, creating a sort of public archive, online archive of, of the city. Um, uh, yeah, you've got Birmingham Loves Photographers, which is a kind of local meetup. Um, you've got lo loads of uh, in in individual kind of curators and um, lots of different practices and, and supports and networks and um, collaboration so so practice is really strong here and I thought it would be great to move down and um, be part of all of that and add something into the mix which felt quite unique um, but also felt born out of Birmingham um, so BOM is probably one of the uh, I think Nicola said unusual interventions or um, that the library supported so Grain um, supported BOM's research and development phase and left a really nice career in curating up in in the northwest um, in a thriving visual arts scene so lots of visual arts organizations um, and lots of exhibition opportunities but is there anyone here from Liverpool no great um, but not um, <laughs> Is it being recorded? Um, but not uh, not the not the kind of big concentration of really exciting practice. So as a curator, I found it really difficult if I wanted to make even one exhibition of locally based work um, in terms of what stuff was on my doorstep and what opportunities there were in terms of the range of quality that there was, that was a real challenge and I saw you know, things that were happening down here that were a real opportunity. Um, so yeah, that's, that's how it all happened and Grain supported it, as did the um, Coventry University. I did a research fellowship for a year with them um, within the Centre for Disruptive Media and really got to thinking about open culture and open access and open source um, and thinking about creative activism which has always been one of my sort of primary interests um, and building a space for a disruptive city in a way, a kind of city um, and region that's been built out of disruptive innovation and manufacturing and production and creativity in a whole um, range of interesting ways. Um, so BOM, Birmingham Open Media, has evolved as a space for art and hacktivism and open culture. Um, and yeah, I guess uh, if I'm talking to some people, um, but then I might describe it as a space for art, technology and science. And, and I suppose what I'm interested in, I don't tend to use the word photography very much if I'm talking about BOM, although photography is really central to what I do. But I find if I talk to people about photography and having a gallery, they tend to send me really shit proposals that um, <laughs> that I just that I'd never want to show. So I kind of feel, although I'm really passionate about photography and a lot of things um, to do with you know the media and practice of photography, um, sometimes I find that term can be quite unhelpful and sort of derail um, 
the sort of programs and collaborations that I want to engineer through BOM. Um, so yeah, hacktivism, um, if you don't know, is politically or socially motivated hacking um, rather than hacking for hacking's sake and mindless hacking or taking money. It's um, stuff uh, which has a really nice relationship to, I guess, social documentary and photography and media in all sorts of ways. Um, I've always been more interested in socially motivated or politically motivated work generally. And um, yeah, the open culture kind of thing is... Um, I guess kind of born out of this moment that we're in of open access and free culture and BOM is really all about um, free access and um, trying to create this um, crazy business model of putting on everything for free and making everything freely available and um, supporting collaborations and, um, and creative research that happens between practitioners and ideals, ideas sharing and skill sharing to create new things and new ideas and imagine new devices, um, which, yeah, would be interesting in the future. So that's BOM. Um, we're based at Dudley Street, which is opposite Adult World, if anyone knows it. <laughs> um, maybe locally, if you don't, um, it's a two-minute walk from New Street Station, and that for me was really important to be really close to the city centre. Um, that's just inside the gallery, which is a really squashed image, and we've got a cafe um, which is run by um, Urban Coffee Company, which is a local um, independent coffee shop um, whose founding directors were IT startup entrepreneurs. Um, so there's a really interesting kind of crossover between, well, we just love art and technology and coffee, basically. So that's a kind of nice mixture of things. There's also um, a photography studio in the basement called Photophilia, who are one of the commercial partners. Bomb set up as a social enterprise. So. Um, we have co-working spaces upstairs um, and we have open studios and we have workshops and um, all sorts of things going on. Um, so yeah, creative activism <coughs> is one of my kind of pr uh, primary interests and this was a seminar that we hosted in the derelict space back in June with Coventry University um, which looked at the relationships between art and hacktivism. Um, which is quite good in terms of just getting people into the space at last and, and just using it as a bit of... Um, a kind of a bit of thinking time, I guess, as to as to what the possibilities were with um, the kind of areas of practice that I was interested in. Um, and previously, I guess, I've done more kind of um, uh, yeah. I mean, you know, Open Eye Gallery. I was well, where I was curator. I curated a show with Richard Moss, who you might know, who made this body of work called Infra. So I co-commissioned some of this with his gallery in New York and he developed a new body of work called Infra using an obsolete military technology which um, was used in the Cold War to survey landscapes and identify um, targets for aerial bombing. And it registers the landscape as bright pink. So he used it in the Congo to kind of, as this sort of metaphor for um, conflict, I guess, and what's hidden and the kind of very convoluted conflict that's been going on for centuries. Um, so yeah, but a really extraordinary body of work and that toured all over the world. It went to the Venice Biennale. Um, it's been everywhere basically. And alongside that show, um, I was quite interested in historical pairings with contemporary work. So alongside Richard Moss, and it wasn't a very popular decision as far as they were concerned, but had an archive exhibition upstairs with Simon Norfolk for most of it, I have no words, which is a, probably most of you know it, a seminal body of work in photography. Um, kind of marked the turning point of him as a photojournalist or leaving the practice of photojournalism and um, embarking on a more kind of um, uh, artistic-led, I guess, um, documentary of the world and its conflicts. Um, so there's a staircase at Auschwitz and um, yeah, a church in Rwanda. Um, so they had really kind of opposing, kind of quite bizarrely similar, but opposing sort of views on what they were doing and that kind of sparked quite a lot of debate. Um, and then I've done things like this with Mishka Henna. Um, so, yeah, it was a, um, you know, we commissioned quite a few new bodies of work and brought together, I mean, it's his first solo show, so it brought together um, his project Less American, which is a kind of rip-off of Robert Frank's seminal book, um, and brought together his book, a collection of artist books um, and um, new kind of aerial photography work, or not aerial photography, because it's using... Um, Google Earth to look at the landscape um, from above and look at things like this, which are um, yeah, massive 
oil fields um, across the American landscape, which kind of looks like nodes of a microchip. Um, but yeah, I mean, things like, I suppose, Richard and uh, Mishka, they kind of seem so safe now, <coughs> looking back on it, you know, he's, after that, he got shortlisted for the Dorsha Bore Surprise, and um, shortlisted for the Prepicta, won the Infinity Award for Art at the American New York Center for Photography. Um, he's just about to give a, a talk with Francis Hodgson at the Whitechapel. Um, Richard's been everywhere since then, and they all, they kind of feel like really safe bets, but I had to fight really hard for both of those shows and actually got quite a lot of stick from the audience in doing it. And then I think I've, you know, I've done stuff like this. I've worked with the Yes Men, who are media pranksters, interventionists, um, who issue, um, this was a project that I did for Fact, so I did an exhibition with these guys. Um, they generally uh, try and infiltrate media situations by um, pretending that they're someone that they're not. So they set up a fake company and sent out a press release on behalf of Dow Chemical saying that they were finally admitting responsibility for the Bhopal disaster, um, which obviously um, killed so many people, massive, uh, which Dow have never admitted responsibility for. So then BBC invited them for um, an interview and they went on television, they went on air. Um, and admitted full responsibility <coughs> for this disaster and said that they were going to pay all of the fa families um, the families of the victims. Um, and by the end of the interview, you can um, just about sense the sort of restlessness, basically, then the press realised it wasn't really Dow Chemical. Um, but what that did was force Dow Chemical to release um, a statement saying that um, actually they denied any involvement in the Bhopal disaster and they wouldn't... Um, they weren't prepared to um, pay any compensation because they didn't have anything to do with it, which then sparked more kind of media attention and awareness of the situation. So I guess I'm kind of interested in things like this, that um, asking important questions, kind of like art and hacktivism really, it's kind of politically or socially motivated um, sorts of work. And this by a pitch pong for aesthetical, so this was another project that I did for fact, um, called Primitive, so he um, is a Thai filmmaker, artist, who, um, uh, yeah, he, ma he makes kind of socially engaged projects, so he works um, in rural areas of Thailand and he documented the sort of very brutal history of, of an area of conflict in the um, 70s in the northeast of Thailand and the, the legacy of that um, disaster which hadn't been talked about very much at all and went back to the descendants of these farmers that were driven into the um, into the forest basically. Five minutes, really? Gosh, I better get a move on. Um, so anyway, he made this massive body of work w using photography, film, sound. He made a music video, he made a book and he ended up making a feature film which won the Palm Door at the Cannes Film Festival out of it. Um, the work toured to the New Museum in New York and Hangar Biocca in Mil Milan and um, all over the place. It was a super successful project. And now, in sharp contrast, I've set up this new space called BOM, which is basically a creative collaborative workspace. Um, uh, even though we have a gallery downstairs, which is more kind of um, events based programme, we have co working spaces upstairs and supports um, practitioners. We have nine fellows, just about to be ten. Um, who were based at BOM over the next year, making their own research-based practice and projects out of that, and contributing, feeding back into the BOM ecosystem in all sorts of ways. Um, here they are scoffing cakes from Urban Coffee downstairs, and they, we've got the snug and various open studio spaces where if they need to spread out and make bigger work, then they can. And we've got a little wet lab, which is basically a, a pretty basic darkroom at the moment, which we're developing into a space for arts and science. Um, and this is our launch project with the Chaos Computer Club, who are a bunch of hackers from Germany um, who have been working with two artists, they're ethical hackers, so they've been campaigning for freedom of information for years and years and years through the um, hacktivism. And they've been working with two local artists, Lily Wales, who graduated from Viscoms here at BCU just last year, um, and I found through BCU's mentoring network support for their students. Um, and Leon Trimble, who's a VJ, audiovisual artist, work at one of the Bomb Fellows. Um, so they worked together to create this new series of work, interactive installations, um, and looking at the issues around fingerprint um, security. So that's Starbuck, who's one of the hackers that we worked with, who just um, 
hit the BBC News and The Guardian um, earlier this week because he's just did this conference last week saying that he's basically hacked the, um, uh, is it Defence Minister, German Minister for, yeah. for Defence? Um, just from a photo of her at a press conference doing this, that he's actually cloned her fingerprint. Um, so we have a fingerprint um, sensor in the gallery which scans the um, fingerprints of visitors and puts them into a database where we can do interesting things with them, but we're not, obviously not. Um, and during a live hack, uh, which was one of our events, we developed this body of work which is using DriftNet, so that kind of collects and basically looks at everyone's web searches whilst they're in the building using the Wi-Fi network when they're on any unencrypted websites. Um, so yeah, we're kind of developing new work all the time which gets kind of put out into the exhibition. It's not a kind of like you don't develop a, an exhibition and then put it there and then wait two months and then change the exhibition. It's stuff that's kind of getting maked and hacked all of the time. Um, and we've hosted, we opened like eight weeks ago, I think the 14th of November. And we've had about 30 events in there so far, um, including this event top left last night, which was an open code event, so people looking at open source coding. Um, we've had young people's filmmaking workshops. We've had kids wiring up fruit with silly electronic devices. We've had a um, Korean workshop on innovation through design. Um, and we've done stuff like this um, just for fun, which is just inviting the public in to make um, their own sort of family photo baubles over <laughs> Christmas, which um, when I wasn't there one day, the fellows took it upon themselves to make up their own marketing because we have absolutely no marketing budget. So, you know, BOM was built on a 70k capital project and half of that was electrical and engineering <coughs> costs for the building. Um, you know, we don't have any Arts Council funding currently. I'm just waiting to see if I've got 15 grand for the year, so that would be great. I've got two commercial partners working with me, which helps, and I work with partners like BCU on scraps of money here and there and bits of teaching and things. We really work very hand-to-mouth, especially over the first year, so, um, yeah, just like everyone does, really. Um, so we'll have to put up with this kind of marketing for a bit, I think. Um, but this is like the exciting potential, really, of, of, of what we're doing. And um, rather than curating um, an exquisite program <coughs> which looks beautiful and um, is marketed nicely and um, all the rest of it, it's really about curating an ecosystem of practice and um, bringing together interesting people to see what could happen in the way that you kind of hedge a bet on um, the Yes Men or Mishka Henna or Richard Moss. It's about putting together a group of people um, and seeing what happens. So within the wet lab, um, we have Dan Burwood, who's one of the guys who invented the Some Cities Project, social documentary photographer known as locally, but also had this project on a back burner for years that he wants to like look at the living microorganisms in photographic paper and the sorts of speckles and issues and bacteria and um, fungus and things that can grow and actually destroy a photographic print but actually cultivating them and making organisms respond to different nitrates and chemicals through photographic processes and then looking at that through microscopes. Um, working alongside Joe Gain who I think also graduated from BCU actually a few years ago um, and is doing really interesting things with wet plate processes and now talking to Pete James about daguerreotypes. Um, and Melissa Grant, who's a biochemist interested in <coughs> DIY biology, um, who's also worked as an artist in residence at Lighthouse in Brighton and done all sorts of interesting things. So the three of those coming together who didn't know each other before and starting to get to know each other, hopefully will create some interesting sort of programs and we're using the gallery as a live R&D space through March and April. I'm doing it, I'm there, I promise. This is it. Um, as a live R&D space through March and April to kind of open up what all of the different fellows are working on, there's three of them, um, and to look at opportunities for collaboration, so doing some Skype conversations with international um, wet lab and hacker spaces um, all over the place really. Hang on, where is it? Da, 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 da. I'll just show you the list of fellows who are here. So if you go to BOM's website, which is bomb.org.uk, I don't think I'm going to have enough time to talk about it. No, yeah, there you go. Um, here are our fellows. So Amy Martin, who's um, a young people's film producer, but also done stuff with Young Rewired State, so really interesting digital skills, working with young people, um, 
interesting radical ideas. Antonio Roger, Roberts, who's more commonly known as a glitch artist, who's got an idea to make a new body of work around copyright theft, um, which is right up our street. Dan Burwood, who I've talked about, and Joe Gain. John Sear, he's um, an experimental games developer who makes massive, um, you know, 100 plus player computer games. Um, built his first video game when he was six, which is hard to believe, and then hacked um, a famous um, bookies website when he was 12 <coughs> um, and never got found out. Um, and has since been leading a much more honest life. Leon, who's <laughs> one of the artists and a VJ filmmaker, filmmaker um, doing weird stuff all the time. Yesterday he actually just figured out how to plug in his Game Boy to his iPad and make, was making it mix stuff while he went off to the loo and came back really inspired and there was Joe Gain with a piece of glass having been to the glass country, whatever, black country. Anyway, so it's all really interesting stuff and, uh, and Nikki Pugh who's working with pervasive media um, and um, GPS and all sorts of um, technology and sort of creatures, creative creatures that she's creating. Pete Ashton, who's making a Birmingham camera obscura, um, just to try and imagine what a Birmingham camera obscura would look like as opposed to any other camera obscura, because he's ob obsessed with the idea that Birmingham's would be different, um, and it needs to be built. And Siraj Sheikh, who's a reader in cyber security from Coventry University, um, who was my lead into thinking about the Chaos Computer Club, actually, and doing really interesting things around hacktivism. That's it. There you go. <laughs>